number 10, Pin Tuppy 9. In the 1950s, the British conducted the Blue Streak missile test over the western desert region. The Australian government decided to round up the desert nomads so that they wouldn't be hurt, which meant most of the Pintuppi were taken away, except for one family known as the Pintuppi 9. They were entirely overlooked. That kind of sucks. They continue to live their traditional nomadic lifestyle entirely unaware of European arrival at all. They had no idea about cars or even clothes. That's how far from the beaten path they traveled. It wasn't until 1984 when they finally met Europeans that they discovered what they had missed. The Vintuffy 9 stepped into the 20th century for the first time over 30 years ago after living the nomadic lifestyle for 40,000 years. That's a lot of time. People close to the family say that the Pintuppy 9 still talk more about family members who are still in the bush, but they have no idea what happened to them. Considering it took that long for the Pintuppy 9 to be discovered, who knows how many other people are still out there. Number 9, the Piripakura. When it comes to a lot of these uncontacted and indigenous tribes, we really don't know a lot about them, you know, because they're uh, uncontacted. Well, bam. In the case of the Piripakura, we don't even know what they actually call themselves, if anything. Oh, that's weird. So we call them that? Uh. The outside world just named them the Piripakura, so I hope that's actually okay with them. By now, they're like, that's the worst name ever. It means something obscene in their culture. That'd be so crazy. Last time anyone really checked in on them around the late 90s, there were around 20 people left in their tribe. A lot was happening in the 90s. Furbies were the hot new sleep paralysis demons at Toys R Us. <laughs> and the world saw two members of the Piripakura tribe emerge from the depths of the Brazilian forest. The pair came out seeking medical attention and that's when they revealed the horrible things that this tribe had endured. The most heartbreaking thing that they shared was how much of their tribe had been massacred by non-indigenous people. Oh, that's awful. Causing their tribe's population to dwindle down significantly. At this point, because of the invaders in the forest and the illegal logging that happens around them, no one is even sure if there are any members of the tribe left. For all we know, they could be extinct, which I really hope isn't the case because extinction is for dinosaurs. That's a good one. On number eight, El Molo. The name El Molo means those who make their living from other than cattle. The population of the El Molo tribe in Kenya is getting smaller and smaller, with some thinking that they have all but vanished. But rest assured, they are still around, though their numbers are dwindling. Elusive and mysterious, the El Molo people are believed to have migrated from Ethiopia around 10,000 BC. Today, they live in small villages on the southeastern shore of Lake Turkana. The reason their numbers are so low is because of their forced relocation and other tribe attacks. As other tribes expand their borders, they were forced to move farther south to the island of ghosts. The tribe is also very vulnerable to disease due to their unbalanced protein rich diet, which is another reason why they may soon disappear. However, it is their practice of inbreeding that may be their final act. The recessive genes cause them to age faster and expose them to disease. Their average life expectancy is 30 to 45 years of age, and with only 200 people left, researchers don't expect them to last long. But for now, they're still going, and who knows, they've survived this long after all. At number seven, the Nok. The Nok tribe from what is now northern Nigeria lasted from 1000 BCE to 300 BCE and was a very mysterious culture that was actually discovered by complete accident. Tin miners happened to find ancient artifacts, including a terracotta head, during a mining operation in 1943. This discovery began a larger excavation expedition in the area, and they have since found plenty of other terracotta artifacts and sculptures, including depictions of people wearing jewelry and carrying weapons like batons and flails. Some of their sculptures also depicted people with diseases like elephantitis. Knock artifacts have a history of being stolen or removed from archaeological sites without notice, which has some researchers wondering what, other than their historical significance, makes them so prone to thefts. There is for sure a mystery there. At number six, the Macho Piro tribe. Peru's Amazon rainforest is a vast, mysterious landscape with secrets deeper and darker than anything in the Marianas Trench. The life of a man named Nicolas Flores was mysteriously taken and the death went unsolved. But prior to that, Flores had spent years trying to reach out to the Macho Piro tribe. For over 100 years, people thought that they had disappeared, were it not for extremely rare sightings. The tribe was in fact living in complete isolation and 
expert at camouflage. Flores served as a conduit between the tribe's people, trading with them all in an attempt to lure them out. But then one day in 2011, the relationship went sour and he wound up dead with an arrow in his heart. However, as of 2016, it appears that the Macho are getting curious as sightings have increased and they're slowly starting to emerge. The Department of Native Isolated People and People in Initial Contact decided to send a team to engage with them after the death of another individual. They usually don't like to interfere, but with the threat of violence, they had to step in. Today, the tribe has created new bonds with select conduits, but remain mostly to themselves. Number five, Clovis. We're taking a look at some mammoth hunters for this next point. This civilization is considered the first inhabitants of the New World. Hunters would use what's called Clovis points to get their next meal. They would use chipped flint. Now they had to hunt bison, mammoths, deer, anything that had skin to use for shelter, but also clothing. In fact, this 10,000 year old civilization may have disappeared at the same time as mammoths. After all, with these historical beasts acting as both your gear and your food, the Ice Age ought to do some damage. At number four, the Carafayana. This next lost tribe is so small that it's no wonder why people didn't know that they existed. With only 50 people in their community, they remain entirely isolated to protect their community. As a result, very little information is known about them. They are located within the Amazon regions of Brazil. Again, the Amazon, not really all that surprising. But despite living in isolation, they are still affected by the outside world. Illegal logging practices and destruction of their land are all threatening their way of life. Their practicing religion is based on the animals and plants that surround them, and as they suffer, so does the tribe. Further specifics about their beliefs remain a mystery, however. We do know that they are a nomadic hunter-gatherer tribe, but their horticultural practices remain foggy. Considering everything that's happened this year, I'm not surprised that they want to stay away from modern society. And number three, the Danubians. The Danubians were an ancient civilization who thrived near the Balkan foothills and the lower Danube Valley between 5500 BCE and 3500 BCE. Over the course of 1500 years, the Danubians became one of the most advanced societies at this time. They were best known for their work with terracotta, more specifically their creation of goddess figurines. Though they are impressive pieces, the purpose of these figurines remains unknown to researchers, but many speculate that they were used to celebrate the strength of women in their culture. The Danubians were also known to cast gold into graves, and they seem to have taken this very seriously since one of the cemeteries they found had a collection of around 3,000 pieces of gold. Though they were very impressive for their time, they later just seemed to have vanished or died off. But researchers have yet to piece together exactly what happened to these ancient people. At number two, the Toromona. The Amazon, man. What the heck is up with that place? So many things that can kill you and you can make mysterious friends. What a place to be. The Toromona are a group of people indigenous to Bolivia and live near the upper Medidi River. We know they exist, however, there has been little to no notable contact with this tribe beyond communication with other tribes. Because there are so little sightings, many doubt that they even exist, but they do. A Norwegian biologist went out searching for the tribe, but then mysteriously disappeared in 1997. His body never recovered, but they know he went missing near the Medidi Park. Most recent sightings occurred in the 21st century when the Arona people of Bolivia told Michael Brown that they made contact. Michael Brown is an anthropologist, and though nothing could be confirmed, he believes that the group finally came in contact with the Turamona. However, it looks like sightings become less and less as Bolivia's administrative resolution created an exclusive, reserved, untouchable portion of the Medidi National Park to protect the Toromona. Number one, the Sentinelese. The Sentinelese tribe are known as the most isolated tribe, and when I tell you they do not like outsiders, they do not like outsiders, and we're not talking about the movie. They don't like us in general, they just don't like anyone else. Get out of here. These people live on a small island called North Sentinel Island and they do not welcome visitors looking for an island getaway. In fact, the moment an outsider steps foot on their land, it's basically game over and not in the fun video game kind of way. The Sentinelese have been known to attack anyone who invades their home, which is the biggest reason as to why we don't know much about them. People have tried to make contact with the Sentinelese in the past. Most attempts were unsuccessful with the tribe either being completely unwelcoming to the outsiders or being open to contact, then suddenly turning hostile. But there have been somewhat successful attempts as they've accepted gifts from authorities. So acceptance by convenience. They're like, oh, that looks good. We'll take that. Now, 
Go away. I mean, sure, they tricked them into giving them food and then shot arrows at them, but it was the most positive response they've had so far. Officials have since decided to leave the tribe alone since they weren't getting anywhere with them and didn't want to risk getting anyone sick, since because the Centalese are so isolated, they don't have immune systems the same as ours, and any of our germs could easily wipe out their population. Bottom line here is that they exist, but they want you to forget that they do. Sort of like the men in black and aliens. Thank god you made the reference. So get your neuralizers out and forget I told you anything about them. <laughs> Kicking off the list at number 10, Roanoke Island, North Carolina. Just off the coast of what is now North Carolina, back in August 1587, around 100 English settlers arrived to Roanoke Island. John White, governor of the new colony, had to sail back to England to grab supplies. But while he was away, a naval war broke out between England and Spain, so his commute was delayed. Eh, just a tad, you know. He got back three years later in 1590 with said supplies. He's like, hey, sorry I'm late. We got some uh, naval war traffic. You know how it is. Upon arrival, however, nobody was there anymore, including his wife, daughter, granddaughter, anybody. Among the 100 or so inhabitants, they all vanished. The only hint as to where they went or what even happened was the words Croatone and Crow carved into a wooden post and CRO on a tree. Now, Croatone or Croatoan was the name of the Native American tribe that lived on the island as well. But after looking for evidence, theories, even archaeological exploration, experts still can't figure this one out. I've actually been to this island back when I was 16, so this one really creeped me out, not gonna lie. That's why I wanted to start with this one. Number nine, the Mississippians. We'll dial back the calendar to 700 CE. Now at this point, before European colonization, the American Southeast was home to the Mississippians. Their main area was the city called Cahokia, which is now modern day Collinsville, Illinois. It's not large either, it's just six square miles. Check out this photo of Monks Mound, a now historic site. We look at ancient Egyptians and our jaws drop at the sight of those pyramids, plus their alignment with the stars, it's all naturally fascinating. Well, Cahokia was once home to pyramids and large wooden structures as well. We're not exactly sure what happened to this 40,000 person civilization, but experts guess famine and disease. Number eight, Katahuyuk. Another ancient city, another ancient mystery. This time we're looking at what's currently South Central Turkey. About 9,000 years ago, it looked a lot different. Katahuyuk was popping off up until 7,000 years ago, but again, we have no clue what really happened. The most interesting tidbit of history here is the way that this ancient civilization built their homes. They made houses side by side, really close together, and as fitting as it is for this channel, you would say it was almost like a hive-like system. They didn't have doors, they didn't have mail slots or welcome mats, instead they had holes on their roofs. That's how they got in and out every day. So yeah, they would use ladders to get in and out, which I gotta say, sounds pretty exhausting. They're probably all pretty ripped. Number seven, the Awagawa. In just Brazil alone, there are an estimated 100 tribes who call the Amazon basin home. That's a lot of competition because, you know, survival of the fittest. Hey, not only that, but illegal logging has also caused a significant threat to their homes and a way of life because they keep being pushed back further away from their homes due to deforestation. The Awagawa have been able to defy the threats of blatant capitalism and environmental ruin because they are known hunter-gatherers who live life in a similar way to the Neolithic humans back when woolly mammoths roamed the earth. The people in this tribe make their own weapons like bows and arrows and are known for the craftsmanship, having created things like hammocks out of nothing but palm fibers, hopes, and dreams. Great. The coolest thing about this tribe though is the fact that they keep monkeys as pets. Uh, Amazing. That is a dream we all wish we could fulfill. A couple of years ago, a member of the Awagawa tribe was secretly recorded showing him hunting in the forest, but other than that, not much else has been seen from them. Number six, Gobekli Tepe. Just six miles from the ancient Turkey city Yurfa, Gobekli Tepe is 100,000 years old. They are these massive stone circles created by a civilization that predates Stonehenge by 6,000 years. Yeah, it's nuts. We're convinced it's the world's oldest temple, a holy temple rather. Because this area in the world, I mean now it may not be a spectacle, but thousands of years ago, you would be able to see the horizon in every single direction. Herds of beautiful animals racing by, fields of barley and wheat, it would have looked like a temple from Legend of Zelda. Masterpiece. It was actually first discovered back in the 1960s by university anthropologists. They were doing a survey of the region, found this place, and assumed it was an ancient cemetery and then nothing more, and then continued on their merry way. 
Now cut to 1994, best year ever. Klaus Schmidt was doing surveys for himself, found the same site, and knew right away from the first glance that this was man-made and there was much, much more to it. At number five, the land of Punt. One of the most mysterious ancient tribes that you might not have known about are the people of the land of Punt. Many of the ancient cultures that we know about today we've learned through ancient texts, and this is basically the case with the land of Punt. We only know about them through Egyptian records. What we do know about the ancient land of Punt is that it was a kingdom somewhere in Africa that regularly made trades with ancient Egyptians. The land of Punt and the ancient Egyptians were trading goods from at least the 26th century BCE during the reign of Pharaoh Khufu, who was also known as the builder of the Great Pyramids of Giza. Now, even though we know that the land of Punt traded with ancient Egyptians, we don't know exactly where these people were located. The Egyptians kept record of the goods that were being traded with the land of Punt, like gold, ebony, and myrrh, but they didn't exactly keep record of where these goods were being sent, which has researchers frustrated because they can only hypothesize where these goods may have been sent. Some researchers believe that perhaps the land of Punt was located somewhere in Arabia or perhaps on the Horn of Africa or maybe somewhere down the Nile River that is now southern Sudan and Ethiopia. I honestly hope that one day the location of the land of Punt is found because there could be so many amazing finds waiting to be discovered. Number four. Anasazi. Before the first skyscrapers were built in the 1800s, the Anasazi built massive stone buildings as well on the sides of cliffs back in the 12th century. Some of these walls, by the way, housed up to hundreds of residents. They were huge. What's now present day Massa Verde National Park was pretty intense back in those days. Scientists have uncovered some hints as to where these creative cliff builders disappeared to. Well, violence. Yeah, the thing that's still going strong today, thousands of years later, see back in the 12th century United States, long term drought led the Anasazi to violence and perhaps they just wiped each other out. Other series suggest that the Anasazi had to abandon their massive homes around the 1300s and then travel south. Either or. Number three, Rook. The Rook people of Vietnam are known as the world's most mysterious tribe and for good reason too. These people live in freaking tunnels, bro, what? This tribe was known until the late 1950s when during the Vietnam War, a series of explosions brought them out of the forest. In 1959, Vietnam soldiers first made contact with the Rook tribe and since then people have tried to learn more about this tribe. It is said that members of the tribe are very agile, being able to climb and swing through trees like George of the Jungle? That's so cool. They are also known to have magic abilities, or so it is said. One researcher who observed the Rook tribe said that among their witchcraft rituals, their most famous and most often used spells are blow open, blow close, and air cut. What? 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 I'm becoming more and more convinced that these people are airbenders or something. Their air cut spell is apparently a defensive spell that makes it so that when they whisper the incantation, beasts like tigers, leopards, and even wild elephants won't attack them. Sounds pretty OP to me, seriously. Un unfortunately, other than their spells, agility, and cave dwelling, not much else is known about the Rook tribe, so they remain just as much a mystery to us as we are to them. Number two, Vikings. I'm a big Assassin's Creed fan, and when they announced Vikings as their newest installment, I was so excited. I'm a big Norse mythology fan, but what actually happened to Greenland Vikings? There's a huge mystery around them. Well, around 985 AD, Eric the Red arrived with large fleet to colonize the island, and of course was subsequently Subsequently banished for manslaughter. Yeah. So now we have two colonies on Greenland, a large eastern colony and a smaller western one. Now these Vikings didn't build massive pyramids, but instead they built stone churches that still stand to this day. These Vikings were around for a few hundred years and at one point in time there were 5,000 Vikings or so. That's incredible. That's a lot of Vikings. But later on in 1721, a missionary expedition arrived and there were not 5,000 Vikings. In fact, there were zero Vikings. Archaeologists did the digging and apparently the western settlement died off around 1400 AD and just decades later the eastern settlement was well simply abandoned. And there's also a handful of family fun movies that hint at to what happened to them as well. The Ice Age. Well the small one in the 14th century but still an Ice Age nonetheless. Number one, the Indus River Valley Civilization. What's now modern Pakistan was one of the world's earliest societies. Also referred to as the Harappan Civilization or the Indus were actually quite large. We we're talking about Vikings in the thousands, but the Indus reached about 5 million. Aside from the other earliest civilizations, be it Egyptians and the Mesopotamians, they were considered the most extensive. The world's first ever dentist came from the Indus Valley, so thank you. 
Something way more interesting though than dentist facts is that when compared to Egyptian ancient cultures, the Indus never built any palaces or temples, meaning there were no priests or kings. But we still get to study ancient texts. Those are always fun and confusing. The Indus had a language that we're slowly but surely decoding today. But even so, there's still around 250 to 500 characters that remain a mystery. And number 10, the Scylla. Even though the Scylla Kingdom was one of the longest standing royal dynasties ever, not many people know about it because very few traces of their existence have been left behind. The Scylla ruled most of the Korean peninsula between 57 BCE and 935 CE, but again, not much is known about them. Very few burial sites have been found, and the majority of what's been recovered by researchers are various treasures, such as ornate jewelry and weapons. One set of remains that was discovered by archaeologists did, however, give scientists a bit of a glimpse into the life of the Scylla. The remains of a woman estimated to be in her early 30s was found, and from what scientists discovered, they know that she was likely a vegetarian, and that she had an elongated skull, which may suggest that the Scylla could have practiced body modifications in their society, but nothing can be confirmed. The story of how the Scylla came to be comes from legend. It was said that the Scylla was founded by a man that was hatched from a mysterious egg in the forest and married a queen who was born from the ribs of a dragon. Knowing this legend, it's not surprising to find out that this society was very aristocratic. If your founder was hatched from an egg and married a queen, then there's gotta be some kind of hierarchy going on. <laughs> and number nine, the Indus. The Indus is the largest known ancient urban culture, and they did some pretty impressive things too. Stretching from the Indus River in modern day Pakistan to the Arabian Sea and the Ganges in India, this ancient metropolis thrived from 3300 BCE to 1600 BCE. The Indus were quite innovative for their time, having created sewage and drainage systems for their large city. They also built huge walls and granaries, and they invested their time in arts by creating pottery and glazed beads, and they even had dental care. Scientists actually found the remains of a number of people who showed signs of having received dental work on their molars between 7,500 and 9,000 years ago. Things seem to have been going pretty well for these people, but eventually they had to leave their dwellings behind, and it is theorized that this happened because climate change started to affect the monsoonal rains in the area, and this in turn dried up most of their land, and obviously that isn't good for agriculture, and so they fled and went elsewhere. Before we continue learning about more ancient people, I would like to first take a moment to ask you guys to leave a like on this video if you're enjoying it so far, and maybe even subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We would love to have you as part of the Bumblebee family, so smash that subscribe button and join the hive. And number eight, the Sang Sing Dui. This Bronze Age culture is believed to have lived in what is now China's Sichuan province. First evidence of this group of people was first discovered in the late 1920s, but despite efforts of archaeologists and researchers, not much is known about this ancient tribe. What we do know about them is that the Sang Sing Dui were a very artistic group. Based on some of the artwork found by researchers, this group of ancient people were prolific makers of bronze and gold foil masks. Some scientists believe that these masks may have represented certain gods in their culture or even ancestors. No one really knows what happened to this group of people though. There is evidence that the Sang Sing Dui abandoned their homes 2800 to 3000 years ago and may have moved to a neighboring province, but more research is needed to prove this. As for why they may have relocated, some researchers believe that perhaps there was an earthquake or even a landslide that caused people to flee. Number seven, Mayans. One of the most advanced civilizations on this list, the Maya, were somehow able to create these massive stone structures in the middle of southern Mexico jungles. Next to the Egyptian pyramids, I'd say these are almost just as popular at this point. One of the most interesting pieces of the Maya, I'm sure as we all recall, was their calendar and the way that they worked it. I mean, we made a movie about 2012. The news was talking about 2012. Literally 12 years after Y2K, we're like, what if it happens again? Like, you know, this time seems serious. It's, it's not, it's not gonna happen. We're good for now. We're gonna probably end ourselves before a calendar or you know, a movie does. The Yucatan jungles are filled with pyramids and beautiful complex monuments lost in time, but where did the builders go and why did they leave? Well, a couple scientists analyzed rock samples around these areas and they were able to study the water levels in nearby lakes, suggesting that the reason the Mayans disappeared were not aliens, but rather they collapsed because of a drought. That checks out. Aliens are cool, you know, and the calendar stuff's cool, but no, they're just drought. On number six, the Etrusians. 
In Northern Italy, between 700 BCE and 500 BCE, there lived an ancient society of people called the Astrusians. This group of people were a thriving theocratic society, that is, before they were eventually absorbed into the Roman Republic. The Astrusians had their own written language and left behind a number of luxurious family tombs as well. As I mentioned, this society was theocratic as the artifacts they left behind suggest that religion and rituals were a big part of their daily lives. Among some of the artifacts that have been discovered by researchers include the earliest depictions of childbirth in Western art, and even a number of sandstone slabs that had been engraved with ancient Etrusian text. The archaeological sites where researchers continue to uncover the secrets of this ancient populace have revealed over 25,000 artifacts, and scientists continue to uncover more each day. Number 5. The Jarawa the Jarawa tribe is one of the tribes of the Andaman Islands who are believed to have been settled there for over 55,000 years. That means that they were among the first humans to get there and when they did they thought, hey this place is bussin, let's stay. And so they did. The Jarawa tribe has approximately 400 members and they live in social groups of about 40 to 50 people so they're a pretty close knit group, much like the Bumblebee family, that's cute. Though they are overall very self sufficient in their own environment, the Jarawa tribe got curious as to what was going on outside of their home, and they were in for a rude awakening in the 90s. In 1998, people from the Jarawa tribe emerged from their forest for the first time without their bows and other weapons to explore nearby establishments and settlements. As a result, the outside government decided that they wanted to intervene and tried to put together a quote unquote master plan, their words, not mine, to integrate the Jarawa tribe into modern society giving them an economy to sustain and even detailing what clothes the people would wear. As you would imagine, that wasn't a good idea. These types of plans had failed many times in the past and it was doomed to happen again. So later in 2004, officials decided to scrap that idea and leave the Jarabo tribe to be clearly the better choice there. And number four, the Bell Beakers. Here's yet another mysterious ancient tribe that you might not have known about. The Bell Beakers are such a mystery that researchers base their name on the only artifacts that have ever been found from these ancient people. The Bell Beakers are known for their pottery that looks like upside down bells, hence the name. These ancient people are believed to have lived across Europe between 2800 BCE and 1800 BCE. Other than their distinctive bell beakers, this ancient tribe also left behind copper artifacts as well as burial sites. An ancient bell beaker cemetery containing 154 graves was found in what is now modern day Czech Republic. Some researchers believe that the bell beakers may have also been responsible for the construction of part of Stonehenge. There are still many unanswered questions about the bell beakers, but until scientists find more evidence, this is all the information that we have on them for now. Number three, Easter Islanders. Back between 300 and 1200 AD, Polynesians used canoes, not carnival cruise ships, but canoes, like little canoes, and then somehow traveled all the way to Easter Island over 2,000 miles away from Chile. That feat in itself is impressive. When you start to really think about the Easter Island heads on that island, it gets even more impressive. The Easter Island Moai statues, keep in mind there were hundreds of them at one point, reached up to 32 feet high and weighed over 82 tons. It was a sight to see until the 1800s, because that's when the civilization vanished. But what happened? Well, many of these statues were destroyed during this time as well, so history doesn't really tell us much. The population was decreased drastically, and the island higher ups, be it priests or chiefs, were all overthrown. Well, what happened to them may give us some ideas for the future. See, Easter Islanders cut down so many trees that before those seeds could enter the earth again, rats ate them all. These guys ran out of trees, which means they ran out of rope or the ability to make more canoes. So naturally, a civil war began, everyone was freaking out, plus starvation. Also, plus, plus, plus the arrival of Europeans in 1722, they immediately wiped out most of the remaining Easter Islanders. Then around the 1800s, waves of smallpox reduced the amount of island natives to just 100. At number two, the Jiahu. Before the rise of China's great dynasties, smaller tribes covered the area, each with their own unique cultures. One of the oldest of these ancient tribes were the Jiahu, and they were located in what is now modern day Hainan province in eastern China. The Jiahu were China's first identifiable civilizations, and they thrived between 7000 BCE and 5700 BCE. The artifacts that researchers were able to recover from this 9000 year old civilization contain things like the world's earliest wine, the oldest working musical instruments, such as flutes made from the bones of birds, some of the oldest preserved rice, as well as the earliest samples of Chinese writing. As for what happened to the Jiahu people, researchers believe that they migrated elsewhere due to flooding from the nearby rivers. And finally, at number one, Ain Ghazal. 
Located in what is now modern-day Jordan, Ain Ghazal was a Neolithic society that boomed during the transition between hunter-gatherer tribes and established civilizations. This ancient society started off with roughly 3,000 people as they came together to create their unique culture, and they also began to develop impressive artwork that decorated their metropolis. Things like plaster figurines of pregnant women and other stylized human figures were found to have adorned their cities. Archaeologists found evidence of this society's transition to farming and agriculture, noting their heavy use of goat herds and vegetable storage. Though the Ingazal society was booming and growing, researchers have noticed groups of people packed up in a hurry and deserted their settlement, with over 90% of the population migrating elsewhere. No one quite knows what prompted so many people to leave the area, but it's most likely that they migrated to other established societies, leaving behind their transitional city for something more modern for their time.